Welcome to today's video. Today I'll be taking you through the process of me painting this beautiful bunch of oranges. I'm using a 300 GSM watercolor paper and going to draw directly with my Sailor Feud pen. The ink that I'm using in this pen is called Noodler's Ink, which is waterproof. Hence, I can ink first and then fill in the watercolors. If you've been following me for a while, you will know that I love inking directly with my pen. I find this technique very soothing and it also helps in improving sketching and quick drawing. If you're new here, you can go back and watch my earlier videos to see various styles of watercolor methods that I use for my paintings. I absolutely love experimenting and I think this is what keeps the spark alive. I've kept this video in real time so you get an idea of um, how my strokes are and even if I make a mistake, I don't go back and change it. So this is very important. It's okay if you draw a few lines which go a little haywire from your reference image or from what's in your mind and it's completely fine to just work around it. Let the wrong line stay there. It is a big learning experience and you also learn a lot of interesting techniques of how to hide these problems when you're painting or you're drawing. I also don't tend to look at these uh, so-called wrong lines as a mistake. I think of them as very interesting depth or uh, lines, strokes that they have created to my artwork. Using a reference image from Unsplash, uh, you can also, if you're a beginner, look at oranges, keep them in front of you, create an interesting composition and just draw what you see. The pen that I'm using has a bent nib and I really love drawing with it because it helps me to create very organic lines. Some of the strokes are thick and in the same stroke some lines are thin and some lines are thick and it, it gives a very organic feel to it. So I like um, creating a lot of illustrations in this way. My illustration is now ready and I'm going to fill in some watercolors. The idea is to just go with the flow, not think too much about the end result. If you're painting along with me, then remember to be very loose with your strokes and not worry too much about the detailing yet. The first layer that I'm doing is wet on dry, which means that my paper is completely dry and my paint is wet. And if I add layers on top of this immediately before I let the first layer dry, then it becomes wet on wet because my base layer is wet and the paint that I'm adding on top of it is also wet. I've added the base uh, yellow color for all of my oranges. The yellow that I have used is a Gamboji hue um, and the palette that I'm using is from Mijillo Mission. It has about 36 welts. So it's very convenient for me to squeeze out my colors and store it in it. I'm uh, using a mix of different kinds of colors, which is from Mijillo Mission, some are from Camel, some are from Daniel Smith. It doesn't matter what brand of watercolors you're using, just follow the technique and you will realize that you are still able to get very beautiful results with it. I'm using a mop brush as it holds a lot of water as compared to the regular round and flat brushes. So I find it very convenient to just pick up color at one time and just add it to all of the areas that I have to fill with green. If you don't have a mop brush with you, then use one of the biggest round brushes that you have. It's now time to move on to creating the next layer. In the next layer, I'm choosing a slightly darker shade of every color. If the layer below is still wet or semi-wet, the darker color uh, that I'm going to add or the second layer that I'm going to add will be easily blend in with it. Now, if your layer, uh, first layer that you have already added is completely dry, then you can add a second layer on top of it and then wash your brush, get some water into it and gradate the two colors together. So basically you're blending it by yourself. One important thing to keep in mind while adding layers is to ensure uh, that the second layer occupies lesser or different areas as compared to the first layer. Otherwise, both the layers, if they occupy the same area, then there is no point of creating the first layer. Unless, of course, you have two contrasting colors and you want it to mix together and create a third color. I'm 
multiple ways to handle this. Um, so what a lot of artists do is they will add um, middle tones in a lot of areas first. They will not add a lighter tone and um, they will not build up from a lighter to a darker shade. Wherever dark is required, they would directly add the dark and then probably they'll go darker than that for the next layer. So I personally like going from lighter to dark. So I like to build up my layers one by one. So that's my style of painting. But feel free to use any style that you like. In fact, experiment with a lot of different styles. With watercolors, sometimes the results are very unpredictable. It completely depends on a lot of other factors like the weather, the humidity, the saturation of the colors that you're using and if there's any wind blowing. So don't get um, down by the result if it is not what you expected. Practice is the most important thing and it is key for any skill that you want to develop. You can see how my layers are building up and as and when I'm writing the darker shades, the entire painting is coming to life. So um, here, if you notice, I added a darker layer of green and I've added it on the entire leaf because this is towards the back. So there's a lot of layering in terms of the object placement that's happening. So the origin is in the forefront and the leaf is at the back. So I did not directly add dark green in the beginning. You can still do that. So like I said before, uh, the style of painting that I'm doing today is building up the layers slowly, little by little. Now that the layers have all dried up, you can see that the saturation of colors have changed basis uh, the amount of pigment and water that was used while painting them. At this stage, you look at the painting from a distance and decide if you want to add additional layers or skip it and just use it as it is. I personally want to add some more green color over here. I want to brighten up the leaves first. You can also have like a sheet of paper along with you to try out the swatches of colors you mix and check if you're happy with that before adding it onto your finished piece. This will save you a lot of trouble in terms of making any mistakes because watercolors is a little difficult to fix your mistakes in terms of the colors. I'm using the same mop brush to add all of the details whether it's in the smaller areas or bigger areas. You can keep switching your brushes if you wish to. Um, I personally like mop brushes because the tip can work in multiple ways. It can be extremely sharp and help you to get really thin lines. And at the same time, because it holds so much of water, the belly helps you to fill up larger areas also very easily. Time to now add some darker layers of the orange. Now for even more layers that you want to create, and if your orange is the darkest that you have at the moment, start mixing in your colors. You can mix a little bit of red with it to create a darker orange or a little bit of brown to create like a brownish orange. I've now moved on to a different round brush for adding in the details. This is by Princeton. And um, um, even though the mop brush is versatile, like I said earlier, because I'm using a slightly darker color, I have moved on to using a round brush for adding these details. So there is no issue of adding excess water. I don't want to create another darker layer on top of this. So I know that uh, with the mop brush, there is a chance that there's more water and less color. So when it dries, it may be a little dull. Now with this round brush, I know that my colors are going to be pretty much accurate or um, pretty dark the way that I want it to be. Hence, I'm using this brush here right now.
I love how the details are coming out right now and everything is looking so bright and happy. I hope you're also enjoying this tutorial and uh, you're enjoying painting along with me. If you have recreated this, don't forget to tag me on Instagram and put up a picture. Also leave here uh, some feedback on this comment section if you like this video and if there are any specific videos that you would like me to create. So I'm now at the favorite part of this painting, which is signing. So thank you so much for joining me in this video and I will see you soon for the next one. Bye bye.